But wait, what about Zipporah's comments on Africans dying of climate change? No, they're dying for lack of affordable power, sanitation, and pumped water. They're being denied coal power by environmental groups who are attacking banks and stripping those banks of their reputations. Just as Greenpeace did to the forestry groups in BC in the war in the woods. And why are they doing this? I don't know. Is it so that the Anglican Church Pension Fund can make money off the world's poorest people? The Anglican Church Pension Fund has a $13 billion fund. It's invested a paltry $75 million in a solar panel company so they can put poor Africans on a land-lease program for tiny solar panels. Hey, I guess it's better than no power at all, but is that climate justice? Sephora told us she met the poor man from Liberia on a plane while on her way to a climate conference. On a plane. <laughs> Sephora also told us in the future there would be more climate refugees and that food prices would skyrocket maybe 30 to 50 percent in some poor regions by 2050. Baloney. Food prices have already doubled and tripled in some poor regions of the world, primarily due to idiotic biofuel policies that have pushed six megatons of corn off world markets and into the gas tanks of North American cars. The UN Special Rapporteur, Rapporteur of the Right to Food, Jean Ziegler, as early as October 26, 2007, said in an official UN communique, he called for a five-year moratorium on biofuel production, saying it's a crime against humanity to convert agricultural productive soil into soil which produces food stuff that will be burned into biofuel. In 2011, the New England Complex Systems Institute has studied the issue of the correlation between food prices and civil unrest. They got to the point where they could actually predict where the next conflict would break out. And that was due to the steep rise in global food prices due to biofuels and food speculators. In these poor countries, if you live on a dollar a day and that doubles, you can't get another job to earn more money. Because in some places, unemployment is 40 to 50 percent. And so you leave for greener pastures, perhaps crossing the Mediterranean because you have nothing to lose. That's not climate change, that's the economy. And why is there such unemployment in that region? Especially in the Middle East, North Africa region. Because these are not democracies and there are no property rights to enable a person to leverage their dead money. This is discussed in Hernando de Soto's The Mystery of Capital. It's not climate change. And why are there so many young men leaving the Middle East for Europe? Two reasons. One is the Hirsi Jama ruling. In 2012, the European Court of Human Rights ruled against Italy, which had returned a number of migrants back to North Africa. It required them to pay each of the nine some $17,000 US, equivalent to a years of work in their homeland. And that was compensation for moral damage. So aside from no work and rising food prices at home, the migrants from the Middle East have two incentives, jackpot justice, or asylum, and one risk, death by starvation or death at sea. For many of these people, they hold the belief that it is written and their fate is already sealed either way. But climate change is not the driver of this migrant crisis. And further, since 2006, the World Bank has reported that by 2020, 100 million young Arabs across the Middle East North Africa region will come of age and will be unemployed. But most Middle Eastern countries are not democracies. Even in a democracy with balanced capitalism, it would be hard to create 100 million jobs. It is impossible in a place where the ruler looks at the citizens as peasants. But that's not climate change. That's culture. Perhaps Tsipora doesn't know these things um, that I just told you. But you can see that there's a much larger story to tell than simply prattling on about climate change and pipelines. So we don't see Germany shutting down natural gas pipelines from Russia to save the planet. We don't see the UK turning away imports of liquefied natural gas from Qatar to save their pants in the winter when their thousands of wind turbines grind to a halt. We don't see South Korea, manufacturer of wind and solar devices, 
going to 100% renewables or shutting down their refineries that accept oil and gas from all our competitor nations. It would be funny if it was not so sad when Sapporo says the difficult but far more practical reality is that Alberta bitumen is a high carbon, high cost product that can't compete against U.S. shale oil on price and won't survive the coming era of absolutely necessary climate change action on emissions intensity. Who made it high cost to extract oil from the oil sands? these activist groups and the Tarzans campaign who devised every way possible to drive up costs, add more regulation, draw out environmental reviews, create public objection to mythical problems, foment public hatred against the oil sands and the people who work in the business and to smear the reputation of the oil sands, not just here, but worldwide. Perhaps Alberta's oil sands can't compete on price, but if we have access to markets, our product will sell because oil demand continues to grow worldwide. Certainly our competitors don't want us to take a chunk of that market. Why do you think somebody paid West Coast environmental law $97,131 to push for a legislated tanker ban on the West Coast? What a bargain, eh? They got it. Here's the grant document. Clearly shows the intent was to shut down Northern Gateway. Likewise, Canada is a pushover for causes since we've been watching David Suzuki and the nature of things for 40 years. Interestingly, it turns out that David Suzuki Foundation has been funded by Power Corporation since 2007. Suzuki Fund pushed for coal phase out in Alberta and for wind to replace it. And voila, Power Corporation Renewable Subsidy is building a wind farm in Jenner, Alberta. So Power Corporation is the 358th largest corporation in the world, an investor in Total SA oil company, by the way. Some grassroots, eh? <laughs>